in the 20th century, people used such kind of fire buckets, which were in a shape of a cone. These buckets were hung on a wall, and sand was filled inside such buckets, and they were used in case of fire, to light off the fire. But gradually, people realized that this kind of buckets were not really useful because these kind of buckets could not be kept on the ground. Because if they were kept on the ground, the sand would fall off or get spilled. So they started using these kinds of a bucket. Well, you can see that this bucket is in the shape of a cone. Whereas this bucket can be produced to make a cone. So actually, you can say that this is a shape that comes out from the cone, and this shape is called a frustum. You can see we have sliced the cone with a plane parallel to the base. So these are the two separated parts of the cone. Now this left out part is called the frustum. So you can say that a cone, when sliced by a plane parallel to the base, what do we get? We get separated parts of a cone. Now the first part looks exactly like the cone, but of a smaller size. And the left out part is called the frustum of a cone. So you can see that this is an inverted frustum. Now the people wanted to know how much metal sheet they would require to make such a kind of a bucket. So for that, what they need to know? They need to know the surface area of the bucket. Now, in order to find out that, they need to know how to find out the surface area of a frustum of a cone. Let's see how can we find it out. Well, the curved surface area, that is the curved surface area of the bucket. The bucket is a curved surface. So the curved surface area of a frustum of a cone can be found out from the formula pi L brackets R1 plus R2. Now, what is this L, R1, and R2? Well, this L refers to the slant height of the frustum. Well, a cone, you know about a cone? A cone has a slant height. In the same way, this frustum also has a slant height, which is known as L. Now, your R1 refers to the top radius. Well, this above circle has some radius. Now, this radius is called R1. Now, what is R2? You can see this is R2. Now, this R2 is the radius of the circle, which is the bottom one. So, R2 is actually called the bottom radius. So, now you know the formula consists of L, that is slant height, R1, that is top radius, and R2, that is bottom radius. So, we have been given that the height of this bucket is 8 centimeter, the top radius is 16 centimeter, and the bottom radius is 10 centimeter. But can you see, we do not have this height thing in our formula. Instead, we are having the slant height, but the slant height is not provided to us. So how can we calculate that? Well, there is a formula for the slant height as well. Well, slant height, that is L, is equal to root over h square, that is a height. So height square plus top radius minus bottom radius whole square. And the whole root gives us the slant height. So let us find out the slant height using this formula. So what we'll do? We'll put the values of this in this formula. So we can write L is equal to root over h square, that is 8 square, plus brackets on R1. R1 is what? 16 centimeter, that is the top radius, minus, minus R2, that is the bottom radius. So this is the bottom radius, so 10. Then we close the brackets and put the square. So now let us solve this. Root over 8 square gives us 64, plus 16 minus 10 gives us 6, so 6 square will be 36. So we get root over 100, that gives us 10 centimeter. So with the help of height, top radius and bottom radius, we found out the slant height of this bucket. That is 10 
centimeter. So we found out that the slant height is what? 10 centimeter. So now we have all the dimensions of this frustum of a cone. So now we can find out the curved surface area of this frustum. Now the curved surface area is what? Pi L, R1 plus R2, where L is the slant height. And we have already found out the slant height using height, radius 1 and radius 2. Now let us put these values in this formula and find out the curved surface area so that people can know how much metallic sheet they would need to make this bucket. So putting the values, we get pi into L, that is 10 centimeter, into R1. So we write brackets. R1 is 16 plus R2, that is 10. So what do we get? 22 by 7 into 10 into 26. And solving this, we'll get 817.14 centimeter square. We are using centimeter square because surface area is always represented by square units. So we are done with the curved surface area of this bucket. But don't you think if we provide a lid to this bucket, there must be some surface area of that lid also. And there is some base of this bucket. So that base also has a surface area. So now let us find out those surface areas as well. So the area of the lid, what it will be? Well, you know that this is actually a circle. And the bottom is actually a circle as well. So what is the area of any circle? It is pi r square. So in this case, the lid has the radius. 16 centimeter, or we named it as what? R1. And the bottom also has a radius, that is R2. So we can frame the formula according to ourselves. So we can say that the area of the lid, that is the top one, will be what? Pi R1 square. So we are just substituting R with R1. And we are also substituting R2 in the case of pi R square where we are finding out the surface area of this base, that is this part. So now let us solve this. Well, pi r1 square will give us what? 22 by 7 into r1, that is 16, into 16. And pi r2 square will give us what? 22 by 7 into radius 2, that is 10, so 10 into 10. Now solving this we get somewhere around 804.56 that is you can take it as 805 or either you can bring it forward like this. So 804.56 centimeters square and the area of the base is 314.28 centimeter square. So we found out the curved surface area, we found out the area of the lid and we also found out the area of the base. So we are done with actually the total surface area of this frustum. The curved surface area, the area of the lid, and the area of the base. This gives us the total surface area of a frustum or this bucket. So this is how we come to total surface area. So total surface area is curved surface area that we had found out in the first, plus the area of the base, and plus the area of the lid. So now, let us find out the total surface area of this bucket. So let us bring forward the values we have already calculated. So the curved surface area was 817.14 plus area of the base, that is 314.28, plus area of the lid, that is 804.56. Now adding this, we get 1935, that is 1935.98. And rounding off, we get 1,936 centimeter square. So this is the total surface area of this bucket. Or you can say the total surface area of a frustum of a cone is curved surface area plus the area of the base plus the area of the lid. Well, now after finding out how much surface area or how much metal sheet they would need to make this bucket, they also wanted to know how much sand they could 
put in inside the bucket. For that, they need to know how much is the capacity of this bucket. So what they need to find out? They need to find out the volume of this bucket so that they can know how much sand they could put inside it. So for that, they found out the volume of this frustum of a cone. So let's see how we can find out the volume of a frustum of a cone. Well, the volume of a frustum of a cone can be found out by the formula 1 by 3 pi h brackets r1 square, that is the top radius square, plus r2 square, that is the bottom radius square, plus r1 into r2, that is top radius into bottom radius. So simply, we can just put the values in this formula and get the answer. So let's do this. 1 by 3 into pi, that is 22 by 7, into height, that is 8 centimeter, brackets r1, that is 16 square, plus r2, that is 10 square, plus r1 into r2, that is 16 into 10. So now let's solve it further. What do we get? 1 by 3 into 22 by 7 into 8 into this thing will give us 560. Or we get 30,000. 272 centimeter cube. We are using centimeter cube because volume is always represented in cubic units. So they found out that the volume of this bucket is 30,272 centimeter cube. So accordingly, they could put the sand inside this. So now you know that the volume of a frustum of a cone can be found out by the formula 1 by 3 pi h, where h is the height of the frustum of the cone, r1 square plus r2 square plus r1 into r2 where R1 represents top radius square, R2 square represents bottom radius square, and R1 into R2 represent top radius into bottom radius.